Well, I went into this season thinking the NL Central would be the easiest division to predict. Boy, was I wrong. Nothing makes sense. And J.D. Hafron is here to make less sense about it from Locked On Cardinals. This is Locked On MLB. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to a Locked On MLB, Locked On Cardinals crossover. This is these, this is the podcast. We talk about all of Major League Baseball on my show, and on JD's show, they talk about the St. Louis Cardinals. Do not be deceived by my old school Mariners shirt. We are going to be talking about the NL Central today. And the, well, <laughs> that it's weird. That it's weird. Hey, uh, in case you're wondering... I am an Emmy-nominated television producer who has been a baseball podcast for over a decade. It's my fifth season here at the Locked On Podcast Network. And if you're keeping score at home, today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. They'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti-style tumbler with every order. Hey, uh, joining me on the show today for the first time, in the regular season, you were on the show in the off season, but you are my, your first appearance during the regular season. JD Hafron, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Sully. I, I wish uh, I had more positive things to talk about as far as how things are going for the Cardinals, but I'm glad to be here just talking ball with you, buddy. Well, appreciate it, man. The, 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 listen to those pipes. Uh, by the <laughs> way, follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball. I'm on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast, and Instagram. And JD, where are you? Uh, you can find me at JD Sports Radio as well as uh, LO underscore Cardinals. Either one of those, that will be me responding to you. Okay, before we get dive right into the St. Louis Cardinals right now, um, I, I do I do have to bring this up. I, I think the last time you were on this feed was when we were doing the, the divisional previews, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And... At that time, it was March. It was an innocent time. And at that time, I said, the Cardinals look like the only team that are trying. I said, the Cardinals going into this year, I said, the Brewers look good, but, (laughs) excuse me, I should have, I should learn how to use the cough button. Um, (laughs) The Brewers look good, but there was already rumblings of whether or not they wanted to trade Corbin Burns. And so you got the sense that, If they stumbled out of the gate, they might be sellers. The Reds look like a mess. The Pirates had talent, but we're not there yet. The Cubs, nobody knows what the Cubs are. And I said, just by default, I said, the Cardinals are going to win this division, probably walking away. And I think I remember saying, what what would happen if the Cardinals had a bad year? And we all laughed. (laughs) So what we're seeing right now is that bizarre Twilight Zone into the Spider-Verse alternate universe where a star-studded Cardinals team is, as of this recording, the worst team in the National League. Yeah. Yeah, it's... uh... It's it's a bizarre world, Sully. Uh, I, I I it's hard to explain it because there are so many things that have gone wrong that have led to these losses. Uh, people keep wanting to know who do we point the finger at? Who do we fire? Well, who, whose well, fault is this? And the question, the the answer to that is it's everybody's fault. It, it's not just one person. So um, it's been very very strange. And you've seen, like you mentioned, that the Pirates were a team that you're like, ah, they got some talent. We're not sure if they're there yet. Uh, The Reds seem to be a a year ahead of where people thought they might be, where they might be competing next year was what a lot of people thought about. And uh, instead, they've made the jump. And then the Brewers, despite, you know, losing some key players to injury so far this season, have been able to weather the storm. And Corbin Burns doesn't look like he's going anywhere. Okay, before we get into who to blame and to even, you know, survey the, the damage of what's gone on, with uh, with the Cardinals, let's take a look at the other contenders in yeah. the National League Central. Because if now 
we have seen all we have to do and believe me met fans say this like it's their mantra while they're doing yoga that at this time the nationals had a losing record at this time the braves had a losing record this time the phillies you know they're pointing to yes 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 you can certainly come back especially and one reason why for the mets and for st louis it is not irrational to point to recent uh you know comeback stories is Mm -hmm. because the Mets have a ton of talent and St. Louis has talent Mm -hmm. and the, the teams that they're, that are in front of them right now, none of them remind me of the 1998 New York Yankees, but assuming, and we'll get to the Cardinals in segment two and three, but assuming St. Louis doesn't pull a Lazarus here and, and find their way back to the top of the NL central. Um, in the last, I mean, which one of the four teams ahead of them do you think has the most realistic chance of being the one to have the honor of playing in a wild card, you know, two best of three series in 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 October? Um, I I I go with Milwaukee first, just because mm-hmm. they have been good more, you know, recently over the last couple of years. They've been a solid team, and I mentioned that they've been able to get through some of the injuries they've dealt with. You know, obviously with uh, Brandon Woodruff being out, that's a huge blow. I mean, that guy would yeah. be an ace on most teams, and uh, mm-hmm. for him to not be around, that's tough. But Corbin Burns, after having kind of a slow start, has gotten back to his dominant form, and uh, I just don't know whether or not I can trust Pittsburgh yet because you've seen them where they took off and then they came crashing back down to earth. Now they're just kind of, kind of floating there. The Reds have been, you know, they just keep injecting a new young superstar. It seems uh, every other week and they've got a lot of energy and a lot of confidence right now and you're seeing it, but yet they're still a game below 500 at the time of this recording. So it's not like they're just blowing away the competition. And the guys they are beating seem to be teams that yeah, they're not great. The Cardinals, the Royals. I mean, if you want to hang your hat on beating those teams, that's fine. But let's see how they do against Houston. And, uh, you know, when the Yankees were in town in Cincinnati, they came in and, and wiped the floor with the Reds. So swept them. So got to got to see them beat good teams before they now- start getting too excited. Now, I will say, I will say in Cincinnati's defense, they did take two out of three from Los Angeles. They did take two mm-hmm. out of three from the Dodgers. So it, it, they, they haven't all been tomato cans from Missouri that they've mm-hmm. been beating up. But yeah, they <laughs> happened to catch the Royals at the uh, at their absolute worst. And, you know, and then they caught the, you know, they caught your Cardinals when they were when they were floundering. Uh, as opposed to now. Um, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. We are the, um, the, the Reds are going to be facing Houston and then they'll face Colorado, but then they've got a, they're going to face the Braves and they're going to face Baltimore after that. So mm-hmm. three out of the next four teams for Cincinnati are going to be a real test about this recent win streak. And you made a great point that like, if we had got to this point in a normal year, Okay, let's say the Cardinals were on, were on path to win like 90, 91 games. And we looked up and we would see, hey, the Pirates and the Reds are both hanging around 500. That's a nice improvement. We'd be patting them on the head like, good job. You're, 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 you're improving. Um, and, I, and the Reds are doing exactly what a team like Cincinnati should do, which is saying, hey, if we got talented players in AAA, bring them up. What's, what is the worst thing? The, the worst case scenario is is the De La Cruz's and everybody get some major league experience. They treat this like extended spring training. Best case scenario is they energize the team and they steal a very winnable National League Central. The same thing with Pittsburgh. When you look at them and go like, hey, um, you, know, I'll, you know, under normal circumstances, hey, look at that. They're winning more than they're losing. This is a foundational year. This is kind of like what the Royals did in 2013, where after all those losing seasons, they finally had a winning season, and that kind of led you know the foundation. But because the Cardinals are found the bottom of the standings, grabbed a shovel, and kept on digging, suddenly you know the a sub 500 Reds team playing people who I wouldn't know if they were wearing "Hello, my name is" stickers on their uniform. <laughs> are only a game and a half out of first place at this point. Yeah. And calling themselves America's team. Have you seen that? 
I have. America's team should have a winning <laughs> record. America's team should have a winning record. I, I, that's a little bit of, hey, 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 hey. You beat up on the Royals and the Cardinals. Let's pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah. This is not yeah. the big red machine again. This is the uh, – um, by the way, uh, just giving a shout-out to uh, another show on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Please check out Lockdown Cubs. They've been killing it on that show. The shows have been great, very blunt, and very straightforward. And Cub fans, you should be enraged because you play in the biggest market in a team that could print money. You've had a few, you know, it's been, you know, you had the big teardown a couple of years ago, but you brought in some other players and a 500 team could have images of a division title dancing in your head. And the Cubs are seven games under 500. It is a dis- and and I just think it's a disgrace with the Cubs are is will be currently are I have no clue why David Ross is the manager of the Cubs right now I don't know what they're doing and if if a team if if the Pirates Brewers or Reds wind up winning the division the Cubs should be kicking themselves thinking we had a shot to steal a division yeah we had a shot to again even if it's a weak you know, 2005 Pirate, uh, uh, Padre, remember when the Padres won the division going 82 and 80 in 2005? That's still a division title. They still won. They still got to play some playoff baseball. And Hey, the, Cardinal, the Cardinals had a similar team that just was over the 500 mark that won the World Series. That's right. They, that's <laughs> right. The, the, was it 2006? They won like 80. Was it 84 wins? 83 yeah. wins? It was, it, it was not a great team. No. Just got hot but, at the right time. Yeah, and and so, oh man. So anyway, look at that's the state of the National League Central. It's a it's a weird state. Mm-hmm. It is a very weird state. It is it is Florida weird. That's how weird. Who do, who do you like to take the division? If I, if I'm going Brewers as the safety pick, who's the one team? I kind of like the Pirates. I kind of like, like the Pirates. The Pirates. Uh, I think that. If the Brewers, if you asked me two weeks ago, I would have said Milwaukee. But the fact that Milwaukee hasn't been able to put on the aft thrusters, the the fact that they have a clear lane to win a division and they haven't taken advantage of it. And also the Pirates, I I talked about this on the show when I had Ethan on from Lockdown Pirates, that the Pirates were so good in April and so miserable in May and yet didn't fall out of contention. Mm Mm-hmm. I think there's something psychological, like okay, in a normal year, they like, ah, you had a nice start, and ah, you may have a shot at 500. Like, oh wait a minute, we got beaten up, and we're still in first place. By our, we can still, we still have a magic number that's being counted down right now. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, in in some ways, I'm afraid of the Reds a little bit. In that little bit of hey, we got nothing to lose. What do we have a, to lose? Quality. Yeah, it's a, it's a why not us moment for but them right now. This is a whole division of why not us. Yeah. So, yeah. I think the Pirates why not us. I trust a little more than the Reds why not us. I think the Brewers are the safe pick, but because they the Brewers should be up by five at this point. Yeah. And they're not. Yeah. And that makes me worry. And what also makes me worry, we'll get to we'll get to the next segment in a second that this is such a weak year for the trade deadline yes. that the Brewers might just say, screw it, we'll trade Burns anyway. We can rebuild. But anyway, well, that's something to talk about when we, uh, well, maybe at a later time. But let me just tell you something. J.D., you look really comfortable right now. Uh, I appreciate but I that. can only see you from the waist up. Uh, what's going on below? <laughs> and is that? And, and did I just harass you? That, that sounds a little perverted, but that's not what he means, folks. We're we're actually talking about the shorts that I'm wearing underneath, and we're talking about bird dogs because summer is here, and you want to look your best, but at the same time, you want to be comfortable. Okay, you want to be fashionably acceptable when you go do whatever it is you're going to do this summer, whether it is going to baseball games or going golfing or going to lunch or dinner with family members and whatnot. It's nice to have a a pair of shorts that you can wear for all of those occasions. And bird dogs is absolutely the answer. If you're looking for that type of, uh, of pair of shorts or pants, whichever one you're looking for, Uh, they've got the stretch khaki shorts. They're designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and in the leg area to give you that sculpted look that most men are looking for. You don't want the baggy look anymore. That That's not in anymore. No, 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 no. Especially for those of you who have these skinnier legs, they just disappear in baggy shorts. You get the bird dogs. 
they're going to show off the legs that you have down there. And uh, they do the exact thing that the Lululemon brand does, but they fit way better because they aren't made of a stiff, restricting cotton that frankly just doesn't feel all that nice. You know, you don't, you don't want to be sitting somewhere and you're just adjusting and moving around. That's not good. It's not a good look. You want to be able to just kind of lean back and enjoy everything that's going on. They use a cloud knit fit fabric that, you know, looks like khaki but it stretches that that way you get that that slimmer fit without having to sacrifice any of your movement. One of the great things about it, Sully, I'm sure you've been there. Most men have get a little sweaty down below. Not the most comfortable thing in the world. They've got the anti stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long, no matter what you're doing. I wear them on the golf course. I wear them to, to dinners and stuff, and you should too. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. Enter the promo code locked on MLB for a free Yeti style tumbler, which you can put all sorts of different beverages in. Wink, wink with your order. Uh, that's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Talking pants with JD Heffron. <laughs> um, well, speaking of, uh, pants that are being pulled off, uh, the Cardinals have fans have been pantsed by their team. Um, I'm, I, I look at, I'm not trying to say this to sound mean by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I have nothing against the Cardinals. I, I don't know what happened <laughs> because I look at this team and I see, hey, they've got they brought in Wilson Contreras. Mm -hmm. They still have Goldschmidt. They still have Arenado. They still have a ton of young players who keep coming through every day. There's this parade of young players. Um, you have a, a, a rotation of Michaelis Montgomery, Flaherty, Stephen Matz, Jake Woodford, uh, Adam Wainwright. Who am I missing? Am I, Jordan Montgomery, I said. Um, uh, rookie Matthew Libertor has taken oh, Matt, over yeah, okay. a spot in the rotation now. Now, do I do I think this team's going to make people forget about the 1967 Cardinals? No, but that still sounds like a solid team. Yeah, and it's baffling to watch how they lose games each and every day. Uh, Wednesday's game, one, one of the worst of the year Ridiculous. to be one strike away from winning a, a game five to three at home in front of your fans and uh two runs shot by Yastrzemski ties Yastrzemski it up. Yastrzemski hits the home run to tie it. I'm listening to that game live. Yeah. Uh, Yastrzemski hits the home run. And then when they have the stupid runner on base, the automatic runner, you just, there was at no point did I feel like the Cardinals were going to win that game after yeah. Yastrzemski. It was almost a walk-off game tying home run on the road is going to hit the home run and you could hear just the the crowd deflated and yeah. i was i was listening to the giant feed but i watched the home run the clip later from the st louis uh tv feed and yeah. the announcer actually said i don't believe it now yeah. that he said that a lot this year our new announcer chip carey He's seen some really bad baseball. Well, that is Chip Carey. I was about to say yeah. the guy sounds exactly like Chip Carey. Okay, well, there you go. His, grand, yeah, they his said, grandpa they, they used to be. him the, from the Braves this offseason. Oh, I didn't him know. In, oh, so. There you go. There you um, go. Yeah, it's um, – the, it, it, the what keeps happening, because if you go and you look at the numbers and the stats and you're like, wait, how how is this team so bad? How are they losing so much? And it's just, it's just something new every night. There's no consistency. One day – You've got the offense showing up. I mean, most times you score five runs in a nine inning game. You expect to probably win that game in, in Major League Baseball. And, you know, Wednesday, the bullpen falters when a, a game where starting pitching is the star. You know, M Montgomery had a very good game yeah. uh, on Wednesday. Something else happens that, that gives it away. The offense doesn't show up. They've just never been able to put all three aspects of the game bullpen, uh, offense, starting pitching together to go on a run to, to to make a difference and to catch up in what's going on here. And the other side of it that's really disturbing, that's really bothered Cardinal fans and myself, is the lack of fundamentals that they, they have been playing without. Because they just, it, it's all this silly stuff that happens too. The, the bad defense, bad base running, mistakes, not remembering how many ounce there are. Stuff that you're not used to seeing a Cardinals team A veteran do. Cardinals team. Oh, yeah, yeah they're they doing it and they do it a lot and it's and it's bizarre. And so a lot of people say, 
this is clearly a leadership problem that the, the, the leadership and the clubhouse. Now that there is no Yachty or no poo holes from last year, that that's the issue. And that Ali Marmol is the problem and he's got to go. But thinking that you, it makes a lot of sense. And I see where people and why people go to that area and say, that's who it is. That's the problem. The manager is not, not preparing them properly, but yet your president of baseball operations, John Mosellock emphatically, states how happy he is with the job that Ali's been doing. Just said it like a week ago. After Wednesday's loss, the the Cardinals star players, Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, Adam Wainwright, step up and say, this is not Ali's fault. This is not the coaching staff's fault. It's not them not doing their jobs. It's us. It's only us. We're not executing. Put the blame on us. They're, They're sticking up for their manager. And normally when a team is going through a funk like this. And if it is a leadership problem at the top with somebody say like the manager, um, you kind of hear those guys throw the hem under the bus normally, or they just say, you you just get the feel that they don't like the guy anymore, or they just don't talk about him in general. And that's not what we're getting, you know? And um, I don't have an answer to how to fix anything. The simple answer is play better. (laughs) You know, you've got talent, play better. And Schilt, uh, when he was let go and Marmel came in, we're seeing it wasn't Schultz's fault, um, but uh, I have nothing against Ollie Marmel. Nothing. Yeah. I, I, I and, and I think Schilt did a good job. And I thought Marmel has done. You know, last year they won the division, and mm-hmm. and you know if they if they hold on to that lead in the first game of the Phillies series, I think they probably advance. Yeah. Um, who knows how far they would have gone? Um, you know, I I think that they got a. Mazalek, is that how you pronounce his last name? Yeah, yeah, nailed he needs it. to work out there. I've I've targeted three players that I think he should trade for. One is Randy <laughs> Rosarena, <laughs> one is <laughs> Sandy Alcantara, and the other is Zach Gallon. If he can acquire those three players, I think they'll be in good shape. Yeah. And for those of I, you who don't get those of you who don't get that joke, uh JD, please explain it to my audience. I know the Cardinal fans get that joke. Those are names of players who have gone on to superstardom uh, in other locations after the Cardinals had them and traded them away. So Zach that's Gallen why those are those Zach are a kick in, the, kick in the jewels every time those names are brought up. If Zach Gallon wins the Cy Young and he's a he's a candidate, I don't think he's sure. the front runner right now, but he if he has a dynamic second half, he definitely could. That means in one trade. They could have dealt away two Cy Young Award winners. Yeah, unheard of, right? Crazy. Yeah. And um, it, it's it's and- a, it was a situation too where they got desperate. Um, and it the guy they traded for, Marcelo Zuna, was coming off a monster year with the Marlins, a Gold Glove winner in left field, and which we, I don't know how he won that because he's not very good defensively, but he won it. Uh, he was one of those guys that you know it was when they had that meet of the order where it was Stanton. Yelich and Ozuna and Ozuna was crazy good when they traded for him and it was a need for the Cardinals and I still wonder if that particular trade has made them gun shy about moving any other prospects because you saw last season there was the discussion about flirting with Juan Soto from the Mm -hmm. Nationals and all of Cardinal Nation was like yeah let's get some excitement going and then didn't happen. <laughs> I I thought he was absolutely going to the Cardinals. So did I. Absolutely. But we're talking about trades. We're talking about trading big players. That's going to be a subject for the last segment. But first, we've got to talk about making your bets, and that is where you go to FanDuel. Now, look at FanDuel is the place for all your sports betting, for all the sports you want to bet on. It's the official sports betting partner of the NBA. But do you know what? If you want to go make your bets. Now, if you want to make your bets on the Stanley Cup, you're too late. You want to make your bets on the NBA Finals? Too late. But lots of other stuff happening up pretty soon. You get great promotions every day. Safe and secure application. You get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet all of your baseball action and football is coming right around the corner than America's number one sports book. And visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and get a no-sweat first bet for $2,500. FanDuel, it's the official sports boarding partner of the National Basketball 
Association. Here with J.D. Haffron and my weird sort of Cosell Keith Jackson hybrid that I go in from, from time to time. <laughs> uh, go Cougs, Washington State, um, where my communications classes were done uh, at the Edward R. Murrow School of Communications, but many, most of my classes were in Keith Jackson Hall. Nice. There at the Palouse. Um, look at Mosellac has to be feeling a little bit of the heat on his bootocks. Mm-hmm. The, uh, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> the Cardinals have lost eight out of their last nine postseason games. The only game that they've won in the last bunch of years has been during the COVID year, one of the games against San Diego. Um, this is uh, the tenth anniversary of the Cardinals' last pennant, and when you trade away the Rosarenas and the Alcantaras and the Gallons of the world to bring in the Ozunas, to bring in the Goldschmidts, to bring in the Arenados. I can't fault him for not being aggressive, but they haven't worked. Mm-hmm. The players he's traded away have become superstars, and the superstars he's brought in. Now, this is not a fault on Goldschmidt or Arenado, who right. Goldschmidt won the MVP last year, and between you and me, I would have given the MVP to Arenado but it was a coin toss, you know. Yeah. Like it, I think both had, had valid reasons. I I leaned a little more to Arenado because the great offensive stats and what he brings defensively to the game. But but again, it wasn't like I said Goldschmidt. What are you talking about? You know, it, it wasn't. Uh, you know, it, I I totally got it. And you know, you look up and they bring in Wilson Contreras. They go in. They they make the big moves, and the result is. I'm going to go on a limb and say that we're, it'll be 10 years. We'll come and go without a pennant in St. Louis. The, I'm going to, as much as Met fans and every other National League fan is recounting the last bunch of National League champions, I, I don't see this Cardinal team doing that. You and, tell me if you and, were to bet on FanDuel, you would say not, not, on, the not on the Cardinals. <laughs> and at some point, when you have a GM who has gone for broke and some of the his moves have backfired on him, uh, no, I don't blame Ollie, but at some no. point do you say, hey, we got to take the car keys away from you. Yeah, and he's actually been extended, so he's going to be here for a couple more years. And I agree with you. It's It's been a lot of um, – they make a lot of mistakes. The trade ones, like, again, they fleece Colorado to get Arenado. They fleece Arizona to get gold. But then they got fleeced. Yeah. Then they also got but- fleeced elsewhere. Yeah, but then you see those trades, the uh, the, the Tampa Bay trade with uh, a Rosa Reina for a Libertor who is showing promise. And, it, you know, it takes longer normally for pitchers to get up there. But to see a Rosa Reina immediately become a star in Tampa Bay, that was a tough pill to swallow. And then you get the Ozuna trade where everybody's excited for Ozuna, but you didn't know what you had yet in Alcantara or Gallon. And to see them go on to, like you said, possibly both of them winning a Cy Young, it's hard to come back <laughs> from those types of trades and those types of mistakes. And then when you add on top of it, the free agent mistakes that they've made over the years with, you know, feeling like they had to go sign Dexter Fowler and signing guys like Andrew Miller, who are past their prime and Brett Cecil. And, you know, the Wilson Contreras thing is not working so far. I, I believe that he's better than what we're seeing. Um, the weird benching and moving him to an outfielder slash to the DH and then bringing him back to be a catcher. Uh, I threw the stat on my show uh, the other day that since that went down at the time he was hitting, I believe it was 268. He's hit 127 since that whole fiasco took place. And I, I have no doubts it had a mental effect on of course. him. Of course it did. And, and I, I I think that's weird. Uh, I thought the handling of Jordan Walker this year has been weird. Um, yeah. I haven't, I haven't enjoyed that. I'm glad he's back, and I'm glad they're giving him ample playing time. But what are you going to do when New Bar and O'Neal come back? If O'Neal comes back, are you going to bench him or send him back down now? I mean, I, I just I don't agree with how that's been handled. It's been odd. I think, with, I think at this point, you have to keep him up. Because if he's, yeah. your, if he's your outfielder of the future – yeah. and he supposedly is, uh, then you have to say, and, and you look at this team that we, is now, then you've got to be able to say, hey, um, we're, uh, you know, you have to be up here now. This yeah, is your, this is your spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? I'm, I don't mean to bring it down. I Sometimes I wonder, 
Like what would have happened if Oscar Tavares didn't die? And that's kind of where all of this, to where that was the, the impact that that had, that death is one yep. of the reasons they went out and had to go get Jason Hayward. And then felt mm -hmm. when he left, they had to go get Ozuna. Right. It all started at that point, which you hate to say that that was where things started to go downhill, but it had a huge effect on what the future of that outfield was going to be. For those of you who don't remember, Oscar Tavares was, if not the best uh, hitting prospect in baseball, he was one of the like the rising stars. Everyone, yes. he was one of those. He was coming up, and you just knew that he was going to be this 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 huge superstar. And he came up in 2014. Mm -hmm. um played in the playoffs we got played in the nlcs yeah. for the giants uh not for the giants for the, the loss to the giants played for the cardinals and during the world series um when the between giants and kansas city uh he died in a car accident yep. and it was and had a huge huge devastation on the team and the organization um I, there was an article on mlb.com about the possibility of trading Goldschmidt in a market where if you have a great chip, you can get a bunch of pieces back because there's not a lot of teams willing to pull the trigger on an MVP caliber player. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you why I don't pull the trigger on that trade. Okay. I don't trust him to get a haul back. I don't trust him to make the, I don't trust Mazalek to make that deal. Because if you're going to trade Goldschmidt, you got to get the equivalent of an Oscar Tavares back. You got you can't just get a couple of decent players. You have to get two building blocks for the team, either a frontline starter or a potential MVP hitter. You know, just out of out of the, my mind, like a like an Rosarena or an Alcantara <laughs> or a Gallon. And I yeah. don't trust the guy who sent those players. Pa I don't trust him. To make that deal, which is to me the biggest argument to say, I got to take the car keys away from him. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and it doesn't feel like a Cardinals move to trade somebody like a Goldschmidt. You know, very rarely do they trade veteran players that you know still are cornerstones of the team away. Because normally they're not having bad years, so they don't need to. Yeah, but they don't do that because <laughs> they're usually the Cardinals. They're usually yeah. good. But it's not um it's just not something that I, I could see them doing. Um I think they're more likely to trade expiring contracts. Uh Goldie's still got one more year on his. But what are you and gonna get so, for an expiring contract? You're gonna get you're gonna get little piddly poo pieces there. Well, if you're not gonna keep them anyway, I mean what what would be the worth of somebody like a Jordan Montgomery or a, a Jack Flaherty at the deadline for a team that's looking for pitching? I mean, if they're gonna leave anyway, which is what it all seems like is going to happen with both of them, better to get the, something than nothing, right? What you can get from them is if you have if you're gonna trade away some of your blue chip prospects, trading away the Montgomery and everything could fill in those spots in the minor leagues. Like, okay, we trade away our big prospect, but that hole is filled in filled in by this deal with Montgomery. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of doing that's kind of doing two things at once. You're not gonna they're not gonna trade their blue chippers for a big huge deal. They're not right. gonna make like a Shane Bieber trade when right. they're on pace to lose 98 games. Right. So then you have to take a look at well, what could we get for Goldschmidt? And that's yeah. when I say, I don't trust this guy to make the deal. <laughs> so yeah. if it's not um, Marmel's fault, it's somebody's fault. Yeah. I mean, Marmel didn't pick the players, and he's just doing what he can with what he's got. And when you've got guys who are underperforming, it's hard to say it's the manager's fault for not making them feel good about themselves to play better. I find that hard to believe at this level of baseball that that's what's going on. Um, I, I it usually starts in the front office with a guy who's making the decisions to build the team. And when he makes mistakes like he has, I mean, you and I talked about this in the off season when uh, Sean Murphy was available with Oakland and Oakland, according to reports, wanted a package of at the time, the Cardinals number one pitching prospect, which was Gordon Graceffo, Brendan Donovan and Lars Newbar to get Sean Murphy out of there. And both of us said, okay, take him, <laughs> go. Why not? And I, there was so much blowback from Cardinals fans. were like, you can't make that deal. How dare you even suggest that you could trade somebody like Lars Newbar and Brennan Donovan. And I'm like, but who are those guys? Like you're talking about guys who are just kind of good players. You know, they're not crap, but they're not great. 
for a premium player in a premium position who is thriving in Atlanta right now and didn't sign some crazy sick contract. He didn't ask for $200 million or anything. They signed him to a really solid contract, something kind of comparable to what you got Contreras on. Contreras, exactly, and, who, who who is playing in the outfield two-thirds of the yeah, time. Yeah, and, and is completely lost at the plate, and you've got four more years of this deal. Like it's and who made the the decision to do that? Not Ali Marmol. Guys up top did that. And so, yeah. well, look at JD. Um, you know, look at I. I love your show. Your show's a lot of fun now because it's very analytical. Of it's <laughs> it's kind of an autopsy report right now. Yeah. Um, it's CSI St. Louis right now. But uh, I do hope for your sake things start to turn around. I think they. I mean, as I listed off, there's a lot of talent on the team. And the teams that are in first place are barely are just hovering around 500. So yeah. there is still hope, Cardinal fans, which is the main reason why I wouldn't trade Goldschmidt, unless you could get like two like premier blue chippers back and yeah. say, hey, wait, I, these are two pieces we'll have for a long time. Yeah, and that's, that's something I've said too. Was that at this point you you got to listen to anything because if somebody yeah. just comes at you with an offer that just blows you away, I mean, how do you say no at this point? You know, right. for guys like him and for somebody like maybe like a Tommy Edmond or whatever, guys that have a lot of worth to somebody who's trying to make a push for a championship this year and still young, still can play a bunch of different positions. Uh, I'm not saying I want to trade these guys, but at the same time, you got to listen, don't you? All right, we got to wrap up the show. Uh, I, dr- I recorded this before I could get people's answer to the trivia question, so I'll repeat the trivia question. That is Jim Tomei in his 20-something year career played for the Cleveland Indians. That's what they were called then. The Cleveland yeah. Indians, the Philadelphia mm-hmm. Phillies, the Minnesota Twins, the Chicago White Sox, the Baltimore Orioles, and the Los Angeles Dodgers. And he played in the postseason with every one of those teams except one. What is the only team? That is a trivia question. First correct answer at Sully Baseball on Twitter or down here in the YouTube comments uh, gets a shout out on the show there. So the one team that Jim Tome may play for, did he not? play in the postseason with jd where can people follow your show uh you can find us at lo underscore cardinals on twitter at jd sports radio on twitter and wherever you get your podcasts follow us at locked on mlb pods on twitter and instagram i am your pal solid at solid baseball on twitter solid baseball podcast on instagram sorting out the madness <laughs> of a lost cardinal season this has been a locked on mlb locked on cardinals crossover he's jd Heffern. i'm your friend paul francis sullivan please call me sully <laughs>